This is Tim Leahy, and we're going to talk about sepsis for the next seven minutes. Sepsis is uh, loosely defined as a toxic condition relating from the, to the strata of bacteria or other toxic products from a focus of infection. But probably more strictly, it's defined as the combination of SIRS and infection. So what is SIRS? SIRS is the systemic inflammatory response syndrome defined as on this slide as having temperature instability, uh, uh, heart rate or respiratory instability or signs of inflammation on a, a wet blood cell count. And as we'll talk about, there are lots of reasons that people get SIRS, but if you combine that with infection, you have sepsis. And sometimes you'll hear people say septic shock on the wards, and septic shock is really just sepsis plus hypotension either spontaneously, a systolic blood pressure below 60, or the need to use uh, vasopressor agents to keep the blood pressure up above that. Severe septic shock is just the worst side of that, and you know you need multiple pressors. So you know the differential for SIRS, as I mentioned, includes infection. That would be sepsis, but it's important when you're seeing somebody who you suspect has sepsis to be able to think about all of those other causes for it. And fortunately, there's a relatively short list. I, I lump them into categories as follows. Yeah, you could have endogenous tissue damage. The classic example is somebody has pancreatitis, maybe alcoholic pancreatitis. The injury to that tissue just freaks the immune system out, and people can get a syndrome that looks for all the world like sepsis, but it's a SIRS. You could have immune freak out, such as from lupus. You could have other tissue damage that's not endogenous, like pancreatitis was. You could just have really bad multiple trauma. Crush injuries can do this. And then miscellaneous includes endocrinological problems like thyroid storm, adrenal insufficiency, and of course, if you're freaked out about exams, it's well documented that can cause SIRS. So how does sepsis happen? Picture a bad bacterium that comes into contact with an immune cell. The immune cell's reaction is, huh? And then it sends out alarms. It sends out little chemical exclamation points or cytokines, TNF-alpha, interferon gamma, things like that. So, uh, you know, what happens then? I just waved my hands and I said, okay, a whole bunch of cytokines happen. Well, what happens is this calls a bunch of immune cells here. You know, there's a macrophage, but lots of immune cells come. Uh, that's partly because the endothelium gets leaky and they can kind of walk back and forth. Um, the endothelium also gets sort of uh, vasodilated, and uh, we'll talk about the impact that has. All these immune cells contribute to the soup of inflammatory mediators. So, uh, uh, you know, sort of there's a, 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 you know, sort of cytokine storm happening. And... Uh, uh, what also happens is that uh, you get coagulation, you know, coagulation cascade, clotting, and uh, all of these things are uh, potentially good, but they're also potentially bad. So, you know, we talked about how you get a cytokine storm and also vasodilation. I think I said endothelial dilation. I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, not a real thing. Vasodilation. And then uh, coagulation. So, you know, what's good about these things and what's bad? Well, what's good about cytokine storm is that it calls for help. You know, you sort of get other immune cells, uh, you know, recruits immune cells. It, it sort of sets off the whole uh, immune response, really. The, the badness comes if you get a systemic immune response. Instead of, you know, sort of just focusing on that infected big toe, now you've got cytokines all throughout the body if it's overly robust, and immune cells are flying left and right, and, and it's not a directed focus response. If it's too much, it's just out of control and can cause problems. Um, vasodilation is actually uh, good because it helps recruit immune cells too. You know, it sort of, uh, you know, it increases blood flow. The problem is that if it's system, uh, systemic, uh, and then, uh, you know, then you can get sort of, uh, you know, aberrant vasodilation, and you can get ischemia because you've got not enough blood flow to one place and too much in another place, and you you know, you sort of, uh, uh, vasodilation is dysregulated because it's out of control from the cytokine storm. You get sort of a similar thing, just like the vasodilation is, is essentially sort of trying to enable the flow of blood cells to an area of inflammation. Coagulation sort of does the opposite, where it says, you know, let me just isolate uh, this area of tissue damage. You know, if there's a gangrenous toe, let's chop it off. We might say, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to try to treat something. It, it essentially is doing the same thing. It's causing coagulation around the site of uh, injury. The problem is if that's not local and it's uh, systemic, then you can get, you know, ischemia from... Uh, clots, uh, which are, you know, and this is called disseminated intravascular coagulation. 
So what kind of disease state does this cause? Well, um, you know, you get the hypotension that we talked about because there's aberrant uh, systemic vasodilation and, and that disturbs blood flow. Uh, and, and so you get, you know, poor perfusion to the brain, you know, elderly patients who are septic might not think well. You can get bowel ischemia. Your kidneys can fail because they're not perfused well enough. Sometimes they'll see people with uh, digital necrosis, the tips of their fingers are purple because those aren't perfused well enough. And of course, you know, the, the intravascular coagulation doesn't help that because it can clog some of these blood vessels. And, and if both of these things are really severe, you can get purpura fulminans, uh, sort of a hallmark of a septic state. And, you know, imagine this is sort of a, a self-fulfilling prophecy because, you know, this tissue damage and, you know, you know and coagulation is itself a pro-inflammatory state. And so you get more cytokine storm and uh, more uh, uh, coagulation. You know, and, and when it really is bad, one of the... Uh, organs that gets worse uh, hurt is the, are the lungs. You can get this thing that, you know, might, you might look at this chest x-ray and say, is that heart failure? Is that a bilateral pneumonia? What it uh, often is in the ICU and a septic patient is just adult respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS or ARDS. And, you know, it's just uh, immune damage to the, the poor lung that's not uh, ready to handle that. So you can see you get this overly exuberant immune response, collateral tissue damage, and these things can, can sort of um, uh, play off of each other. And at a certain point, it doesn't even really matter uh, what infection caused this. So, you know, you really should think of the thing that kills people in uh, sepsis as uh, multi-organ failure. And that is sepsis. It's a bad thing, but next time we're going to learn how to treat it. I know. It's exciting. I'm with you. See you next time.